Uh, yeah, so speed always takes the form uh, distance per time. Oh, we've got to share my screen. Present screen two. Share. All right. And all those fall in that format. Now, in this class, we're going to be using meters per second most of the time. Um, but all those fit, including light years per century. So, if you ever see like a weird unit like that, all right. Uh, so, you guys in class for flash. You guys remember the pace of the boxes? All right. On the opposite side, all these questions are these questions right here. So, for the camera, boxes, conceptual questions. That's exactly what we're doing. All right. Um, I, I told you guys I'm recording right now, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry if I kicked you out. You guys, uh, you see this pin at the bottom? Yeah. yeah, so you can hop back in. Okay. All right, but I keep class rolling here. Nick Wood in the lead. Chrissy, John, Sammy, and Zepin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, an object moves five meters in the first second, five meters in the next second, five meters in the next second. What is its acceleration? Oh, oh most of you guys got that. Most of you guys got that. That's, that's a little tricky, too. So, uh, all right. So, guys, uh, let me ask you a different question. If you go five meters in one second, and then five meters in the next second, and then five meters in the next second, what is your speed? Five meters per second? And, and it would be constant, wouldn't it? Constant speed? Right? But acceleration, isn't it acceleration a rate change of velocity? Right? Yep. And if you have constant velocity, your acceleration is z z z zero. Yeah. Right. You guys get that? Right. You guys got any questions? All right. Nick Wood, still in the lead. Uh, as an object falls freely in a vacuum, what is increasing? It's, ooh, ooh, it's velocity is increasing, right? All right. So for the camera, I got a, right. in class I'm going to refer to, you guys see, you guys see this poster over here? See this ball falling off the cliff? All right. Look, let's, uh, let's revisit this table, All right? So time's ticking, one, two, three, four, five seconds. Okay, that's great. See, it's always picking up 10 meters per second per passing second, right? That's, that's Earth's gravity pulling it, right? And it's, its speed is actually increasing, right? No, um, yeah, okay, so, so that's it. it. Its velocity is increasing. Right? Acceleration stays constant, right? As, as long as you're in a vacuum, right? Um, uh, side note here, since you guys are AP, I bet you guys can get this. If you did consider air drag, what do you think happens to acceleration after it's been falling long enough? Yep. It equalizes out, right? Yes. What's that called again? Terminal velocity. Terminal velocity, yeah, you're right. So acceleration actually, um, if you include air drag, which we almost always ignore in this class, but with air drag, the acceleration decreases until it reaches zero. And at that point you reach ter terminal velocity. Terminal velocity means you're going as fast as you can go. You just do that all the way down and the air drag cancelizes with, um, with your weight. Is it different with different object shapes? Uh, guys, would it be different for different object shapes? Yeah. I, yeah. Let, let me rephrase that. If you jump out of a plane, does it make a difference if you have a parachute? Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, so we're not quite there yet, but that's a that's a future topic. So yeah, good thinking ahead. Got Vinny, ooh, Derek's on fire. Got Nick Setpan and Woodrow Wilson. Ah, back from the dip. A ball is thrown straight upward. It's caught when it comes back down in the absence of air resistance. The speed when you catch it is what. Yeah, the same way through it. Right. Uh, I'm to draw something out for you guys. I'm gonna flip over, flip the screen over. Right. In fact, you know what? Uh, what I'm about to draw, I do recommend that you put your notes. Right. So, you have your notes out. It's at the brown level right here. Right. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna turn this into a time axis. Right. Time in seconds ticking along. Let's right. say you take a ball and throw the ball straight upwards. So we're going to start with the ball here. Uh, 
I'm throwing it straight upwards at, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put a specific number on this too. Uh, you, you'll see why later. Right. Let's say initial velocity is 30 meters per second. Right. Can you see that? Right. And you know what? All this week we've been calling uh, down positive up ne negative. So just to stick with that convention, maybe I should actually call it negative 30. Is that okay? Right. One second later, it, it's definitely uh, higher in the air. Uh, oh, you guys are in the ball just going straight up, straight down, right? I'm going to take a bunch of pictures and I'm going to put them side by side, see how this is actually a time axis. Okay. So one second later, maybe it's like way up in the air. It's moving how fast? Um, still 30 meters per second. Hold on. It's changing its speed by 10 meters per second every second, right? It's slowing down. Minus 20. 20. 20. Yeah. Yeah. So 20 meters per second, right? And, and of course, negative. Right? Because it's tending towards the ground at 10 meters per second per second. If it was moving up at 30, not moving up at 20. How about one second later? How fast is it going? Ten. Yeah, 10 meters per second upward. So I'll call it like a negative 10 meters per second. Right? One second later, how fast? Zero. Zero meters per second. One second later. Plus 10. Yeah, positive. There you go. Positive 10 meters per second. These are all velocity values. Right? Yep. 20 meters per second. Right. And then 30 meters per second. Okay. Right. These are, of course, all velocity values. Velocity equals. Okay. okay. So, uh, so, it's good to be able to have an image like this in your head. Um, you could have also uh, approached uh, what, what we were trying to answer. Uh, we we're trying to answer if you throw something up at some speed. What's the speed when you catch it? And you guys see it's the same speed, just opposite direction, right? right. The same magnitude of velocity. That, that's what speed is. Speed is the magnitude of velocity. Right? There's a couple other ways you could have also answered this, and I'm going to show you the, uh, this real fast too. Right. So you guys see these formulas? Um, you could actually use different ones to also get the same answer. You guys see this middle one? The F equals V not plus AT? Oh, I'm going to be referring to that a lot throughout this Kahoot. So just be ready to feel that. Oh, oh you know what? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking ahead a little bit. Um, what's that? All right. Oh, uh, actually, I'm going to say that later. Okay. You guys hear that so far? Okay. All right. All right. So hold on to that. I'm going to actually add to that diagram later, but we'll save that. So back to Kahoot. Kahoot. Uh, oh, Nick Wood retaking the lead. Derek's still on fire. A ball thrown upward rises and falls back to the floor. During this time, acceleration is always <laughs> Ooh. Guys, what's my gravity pull? Down. Down. Okay, so 60 you knew it, but now everybody knows it, right? Everybody knows gravity pulls down. So so uh, gravity always pulls you pulls you in that direction, right? Okay. Oh. Right. So okay, back to this. I'm gonna add some vectors. I'm changing to red. You guys see ready? Okay. Guys, uh, as soon as the ball leaves your hand, which it has at this point, the ball is in free fall for every single one of these shots. Right? Remember, it's just going straight up, straight down. I just put it side by side, all those pictures. Right? As soon as it leaves your hand, is it in free fall accelerating down at 10 meters per second squared? Yep. So I'm going to put a red vector. I'm going to call this acceleration. And that's 10 meters per second squared. Right? How about after it's been going up for a second? How much is it accelerating downward? Is it still 10 meters per second squared? Yeah. How about how about a second after that? Yeah. Get good observation. Well, that's we're on an alien planet. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. why. Oh, yeah. Right? So is acceleration and velocity like both vectors? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, guys, you hear that? Uh, so acceleration and velocity—they're both vectors, uh, but they've got different units and they're different concepts and they do different things. But the fact that they are both vectors means that they both have a magnitude and also direction. The numbers refers to the magnitude, right? So, like the number ten, right? Um, and direction would be like up versus down. Okay. Right now, here's where I, uh, I want to compare what's going on with velocity versus what's going on with the acceleration. Right. So, when the ball is headed upward, 
um, it's, it's velocity is upward. Right? Guys, velocity tells you direction of motion. I'm, I'm going to make a table after the cahoots over, and uh, come back. I'm going to talk more about what I'm talking to you guys about right now. Okay. So velocity uh, tells you the direction of motion. Right. Uh, acceleration tells you uh, like which way you're being pulled. Right. And w which is always down. Right. So you guys see while the ball's going up, these two have opposite directions from each other. And is the ball speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down. Hey, just like yesterday when that car was breaking to a stop. Remember, we were using forward as the positive direction when we, we were applying a negative acceleration? That's a lot like this, isn't it? Right? And then when the ball's coming back down, they, they're both in agreement as to the direction. They're both down. The ball's moving down, downward velocity. And also gravity's pulling down, downward acceleration. Right? And the ball's speeding up. Hmm, interesting. Hold on to that idea because, like I said, uh, I'm going to make a table for you guys uh, after this Kahoot. Revisit that idea. Uh, let's see how we're doing on points. We got, oh, Nick's still in the lead. Ah, Woodrow Wilson on fire. Oh. Uh, suppose you travel 300 kilometers, takes five hours. What is your average speed? Uh, yeah, did you guys get, oh, there you go, 60 kilometers per hour. Hey, now, uh, guys, what, what did you want to mention? Uh, almost everybody got that. You guys just divide those two, right? right. What I do want to mention about that is that um, average speed, I uh, almost never talk about. Average speed is total distance divided by total time. Right? Now, when we're actually applying these formulas up here, what kind of speed is this? It's not average, it's what? It starts with an I. Instantaneous. Instantaneous. It's just like at that instant. So um, like 99% of the time, I'm referring to instantaneous velocities. Average velocity, does that mean that, well, let's suppose this is a road trip from here to Tallahassee. That could be five hours, right? Uh, was this guy driving at 60 kilometers per hour the, the entire way? No, he was probably driving faster than that, but he had to make some stops along the way, get gas, that sort of thing. So the average is total distance over total time. That's that. Okay. All right. Next to the lead, a ball is thrown straight upward. At the top of its path, its instantaneous speed is. <laughs> oh, zero, zero. Oh, right. uh, yeah, so awesome that uh, almost everybody got that. Uh, here, here's what I want to mention about that. Right. So back to this example that I keep referring to. It's really classic here. You throw out the ball. Um, at the very top, it's instantaneous speed zero. Remember, it's just going straight up, straight down. Right? Uh, now, it's really awesome that you guys recognize that. Here's why. Remember this page that we solved a few problems from yesterday? And uh, you guys got these very convenient checkboxes. Nobody ever gets you these uh, very convenient uh, checkboxes. This, this is just a graphing class thing. Uh, so you might be asked a question something like, what's the maximum height of a ball? Right? Uh, for example, if you know how fast you can throw a ball, do you think it's at that point, exactly determinable how high the ball is going to go? Doesn't seem like it would be, would it? Or vice versa. If you know how high you can throw a ball, let's say you go out and like measure how high you can throw it, do you think it's exactly determinable how fast you had to have thrown it to get there in the first place? Right? Those would be locked in place. But notice that um, th that's just like one variable, right? And, and I told you you have to be able to identify three, right? So uh, let's take that, that first example I said. Let's say you know your radar gun throwing speed. I know how fast I can throw. I wonder how high I'm going to throw it. Suppose that's the question. So you know one value, you know your throwing speed. Can you identify two more values for these check uh, check boxes? What's another value that you actually know? Acceleration. Yep, yep. You know the gravity pull, ten meters per second squared. So that's two things. You still need one more thing. What's the third thing that you know? Final velocity. Final velocity. Exactly. You know final velocity. Final velocity is, is zero for maximum height because whenever you see maximum height, think final velocity is zero. Uh, Okay, right. you guys got that? Because that is definitely a classically uh, like classic question that could be thrown to you guys. I might ask you guys that one day. I haven't written the next quiz yet, so I don't know what I'm going to put on it. Get things fair game. All right, uh, Nick still in the lead. Which we're Wilson catching up. A ball is thrown straight upward. At the top of its path, its acceleration is what. Why would you say the same question twice? <laughs> <laughs> ah, but, but it's not the same question. Ah, yeah. Right. So, so it's instantaneous speed was zero, but it's still in free fall, isn't it? Right? Once it's left your hand, it's in free fall. 
whether it's moving up, moving down, moving to the side for that matter. We haven't talked about throwing to the side yet. We'll talk about that next week. But um, but once it's only under the influence of its own weight and there's no other forces on it, it's in free fall. It, it's always accelerating down 10 meters per second squared, even at the top when it's turning around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Derek's on fire. We've got Set Pen, Noah, which will we'll survive, and Big Wood. Car accelerates three meters per second per second. How long to get up to 15 meters per second? Yes. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Right. Real fast, just in case you missed it. You guys see these three formulas up here? You guys see this middle one? See this middle one? Right. This middle one answers a lot of questions on this code too. So, would you guys agree that? Um, oh, okay. Well, you know, what, what's implied is that the car starts from rest. It doesn't explicitly say that, but that could be implied, right? Car starts from rest. V naught is zero. Uh, it's picking up speed at a rate of three meters per second squared. So that's a. Uh, your final velocity would be fifteen meters per second. So fifteen divided by three is equal to five, and then the units would be seconds. Five seconds. Okay. Uh, you guys care that? Is good. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, whoops, I forgot to read this. A freely falling object starts for rest. After falling for five seconds, it will have a speed of about. Oh, oh. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, if you pick the green one, you probably were answering a different question. You're probably answering what? Oh. How, far, how, far, how, far, how far it fell in, in meters, right? Okay. So, um, wait, where's my where's my clip? Ah, here we go. All right. So I'm going to refer to this this clip coaster. This clip, yeah, see this clip coaster on the wall. All right. So here's time tick along, tick tick tick. All right. Here's the ball for each of those seconds. Right. All right. It's always picking up speed at 10 meters per, per second squared. That second formula v uh, equals v naught plus at. Acceleration times time, if you multiply these first two columns together, one times 10 is 10, two times 10 is 20, right? You get the speed it's at. And after five seconds, it's picked up to a speed of 50 meters per second, right? Right? How far did it fall? 125. About 125 meters. Wait, how'd you guys know that? College. 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 You guys, call it? You guys get kicked back to high school. Nick, Juliet, Woodrow Wilson, Noah, and Derek. Look at the speedometer of a moving car. You see that car? Yeah, instantaneous speed. Yeah, guys, your speedometer tells you what's going on at that instant, at that exact moment. Instantaneous speed. Right? Oh, any questions about that? Right. Uh, to, to get some like average speed, so some of you guys picked this one. So remember, average speed is total distance divided by the total time. Um, and we hardly ever talk about that in this class. It, we're, we're almost always talking about instantaneous values. Okay. Speedometer. It's a battle for fourth. A car starts from rest. After five seconds, it's picked up to 30 meters per second. What was the acceleration to get there? Yeah, six meters per second squared. Isn't that just this middle equation? Start from S, that's zero. Six meters per second squared times five seconds brings you up to 30 meters per second. Right? That's good. Right. Ooh, same leaders. It's a, it's a fight, fight for first. In a vacuum, objects fall at constant. <laughs> Yeah, constant acceleration. Uh, let me refer back to here, back to the clip. Uh, about half you guys got this. Over half you guys. You guys see this clip? So here's the time. Tick tick tick. Look look at what number is constant. Acceleration is constant, isn't it? And now velocity. That's not constant. Your velocity is changing. It picks up at a constant rate, but the rate of velocity is what acceleration is. Right? Rate of velocity is acceleration. Why does it matter that it's in the vacuum? 
Uh, oh, yeah, guys, what was it? Because, yeah, resistance. you're right, air drag would throw it off, right? So if there was air drag, um, it, it's probably not going to speed up as much as it normally would, right? Oh, yeah, Eddie? When we do add air drag, how off will the equation be if we just forget it? Oh, okay, so yeah, how off are the equations? How, how close will it be? Um, well, uh, I'll put it this way. Um, I saw this problem solved one time. I was in a <laughs> I was in a class called differential equations, which is a post calculus three class, and uh, yeah, I, I survived. I'm here today. Um, <laughs> that was a very tough problem to solve. So uh, yeah, if you're gonna be like an aerospace engineer or something one day, um, I'm sure you will solve that. That is a post calculus three question. So thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see what I I can ask Woodrow you about. Wilson. Oh, oh. Woodrow Wilson is reading. We are <laughs> we are we are under the League of Nations. This combined forces. As drops of water fall from the leaky faucet, drip, 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 drip. What does that look like? Fifty seconds. Yes. Uh, okay, I, I think you guys could have used, used more time. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm sure if I put 20 seconds, you guys would have got that. You guys see, uh, you guys see this cliff over here? Right? Hey, look, you guys see that ball falling? Does that look kind of reminiscent of a leaky faucet? Drip, 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 right? right? And as this drops of water ball, see how they're like spreading out? Uh, which you guys know because of the car ramp lab. You guys know that distance is uh, uh, is directly proportional to time squared. So every single second, it travels further than the previous second, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Which one is <laughs> Bob can jump off the ground with the jumping uh, twice the jumping speed of Alan, just after his feet have left the floor. What's true? See, so you give us like 25 seconds to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Makes no sense. I just want to know why would you pick that thing? The times are arbitrary. There's like the points on whose line is it? Not, not really. It's a lot of words there. Oh, hey, you guys did awesome. Yeah. Guys, those accelerations are equal. In fact, you know what? Not only are they equal, I bet you guys can tell me the number. Yeah. 10 meters per second squared downward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what if, what, what about this though? What if Bob is like twice as massive as Alan? Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? What if Bob jumps at a 45 degree angle? It doesn't matter. It's always down at 10 meters per second squared if you're in free fall. Okay, free fall. Ah, dirt on fire. Nick, uh, climb it over Woodrow. All right, come on, unanimity. Everybody gonna get it. Everybody gonna be a winner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got 25 winners. <laughs> and one of you here. Uh, definitely needs that mental health lesson coming up. Uh, <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Right, so, so uh, is there any question about this? You guys heard that? Uh, Derek on fire. Balls drop from the top of a cliff. Each second its speed increases by. Uh, yeah, it picks up, picks up 10 meters per second for a passing second, right? Uh, who's, got, who's got any questions about that? Any questions? Okay. So it picks up 10 meters per second per passing second? Um, yeah, it, it, as long as you're on Earth, right? As long as you're on Earth, and, and that's implied. Yeah. All right, Derek's still holding on the lead. If you drop a feather and a coin in a vacuum, which will reach, reach ground first? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna tie. Good call. Now, I'll tell you what. Um, I, I, I bet uh, you guys pretty much all get this right. I, I bet you guys' brains are screaming like, I, I don't believe it. 
So, because none, none of us are living our lives in a vacuum. We've all lived in an atmosphere and feathers always kind of float to the ground, right? So, I brought video evidence. Hey. Hold on. Where's my feather camera? Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was to Okay, I'm going to meet this guy a while. Uh, the, the, the pace of things was very slow in the 1970s. He's got a hammer here. He's got a feather here. You guys like this grainy 1970s footage? Uh, where is this guy? On the moon. On the moon. What does the moon not have? Uh, okay. It, it has gravity. It has no atmosphere. atmosphere. And also no Starbucks. But no, no atmosphere. No atmosphere. There's, there's no air drag. Oh, instant replay. <laughs> And I'll drop the two up here and hopefully I'll hit the ground at the same time. Look at that. Mr. Galileo was correct. Mr. Galileo was correct. Hey, he's talking about that 1589 experiment where Galileo was at the top of Lady Tower Pisa. All right. All right. <laughs> They're nuts. No. Projectile fired straight up at ooh, 30 meters per second. How much time to return to the ground? Yeah, six seconds. All right, so about half you guys got that. Uh, let me flip this over and show you guys a, a few ways to get to the answer. All right, this one I kind of jumped the gun on earlier. So, hey, look at this picture. Tick, 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 tick. That's a hang time of six seconds, isn't it? You guys that? Right? Uh, for it, um, oh, thrown up at 30 meters per second, right? So 30, 20, 10, uh, 10 0 is half the problem. That's three seconds to get to the top, and then another three seconds to fall back down. Right? Uh, now, what if you wanted a more formulaic approach? You could draw it out. That'd probably take a long, long time, right? right? Uh, I can tell you two ways to get to the answer. One way is based on symmetry. Because if you throw it up at 30 meters per second, how fast are you catching it? 30. Also 30 meters per second, just the opposite sign, right? So if you do that, you could play off this second formula right here. You could make an equation. It could go like this. I, uh, I'm catching it at 30 meters per second. I threw it upwards at 30 meters per second. That's why that's negative. Right? Uh, Gravity is pulling in the positive direction because down is positive. Um, unless you define it the other way, but we've been doing this, so let's keep doing it. Go like that, right? Okay. Uh, guys, what's 30 minus negative 30? 60. The difference between 30 and negative 30 is 60, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was supposed to be tricky. Yeah. All right, divide by 10. You guys see T is going to be six seconds? You guys see that? All right. That's one way to get it. All right. You could also, you guys see this top corner right here? You can also use this. All right, you guys ready, ready for this? You guys see that X? That X is displacement, right? In, in my context, it is. It's displacement. Now, guys, what's the displacement between the floor back to the floor? Z -z -z zero. Yeah, nothing. Zero, right? Guys, displacement, all you care about is starting point, ending point. Okay? And the floor back to the floor is zero. If you set this equal to zero, and you set uh, velocity equal to negative 30 meters per second and acceleration positive, do you guys think you're going to still get six seconds Six seconds for the time? You sure will. You can try it out if that's what you're going to get. Okay? All right, back to Kahoot. What are we doing here? All right, Derek, uh, on fire in the lead. Nick Wood, Woodrow Wilson, Set Pan, Juliet, uh, Juliet McDaniel. Suppo oh, challenge question, last question. Suppose the jumper claims a hang time of six seconds. If that's true, how high can that jumper jump? Thank you. 
You got that right. You got that right. All right. Ryan and Olivia. Good, good, good job. Good call. Right. 45 oh, meters. Uh, now, before I show you how to solve this, um, let's play a little bit of, little bit of sense here. Um, if you jump off the ground, do you think you could be off the ground for six seconds? No. That doesn't sound reasonable. Unless could you jump 45 meters up? <laughs> that doesn't sound reasonable either. Uh, two unreasonable numbers. It's got to be right. <laughs> Well, if I jump off, that's more of a theoretical situation. All right, so, hey, hey, look at this picture right here. This Isn't this the exact same thing? If you were shaped like a, like a ball? So if you jump off the ground, you wouldn't have a hang time of six seconds, would you? I'm already yeah? shaped like a ball. All right, some of you guys are already there. Uh, you got, um, Let's go. You're jumping off it. Uh, so, so you can figure out your jumping speed, right? Guess that. Now, how, how can I solve this? Um, maybe I should make a tax BB checklist. Let's do that. Let's go tax BB. Do, do a tax BB in 60 right? seconds. Now, you know what like, hang time is six seconds, right? Right? Uh, you know uh, gravity is pulling you at 10 meters per second squared, right? And guys, from the floor back to the floor, uh, that's. What, what what's your displacement? Like zero meters, right? Uh, I bet you could solve it like that, and then this would eventually uh, come out to be. Or oh, I, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm thinking of a little bit different thing. Right? You, you could have, you could solve it that way. You could eventually get there. Start from scratch. Start from scratch. The question was, what's your maximum height? That was the question, right? You're in, you're not interested in going from here to here. You want to go from here to here, or from here to here. Isn't that true? Right. Okay, so hang time six seconds, gotta be careful, because you actually have to chop this problem in half, because the answer is at the halfway bar, right? Uh, actually, that's a really um, good trick to be able to do in physics, chop a problem in half, because there's a very special thing happening at the top. You have zero speed, right? So let's just see, another way to say this is that you have a falling time of three seconds. Isn't that true? Okay. And how far does anything fall in three seconds? About 45 meters. <laughs> How'd you know that? Oh, <laughs> or, or maybe you took, maybe you took this equation, this formula. It said, well, v naught is zero for just the, um, just the falling part. If you go from the top down, right, right, bump that guy. Does it just kind of boil down to x is one half a t squared? It's just that, isn't it? Right. Plug in ten meters per second squared. It's right. I'm speeding up. Do that for just the three seconds of falling. Notice I did not plug in the full hang time, or just half the time. Okay. One half factor. That will give you 45 meters. Yeah. That's it. So, yeah. So, if you threw a ball and somebody was timing it and it was in the air for six seconds, how high did the ball go? 45 meters. Right? You guys got that? Oh, we, we still have to get the winners. I'm gonna flip over just to just to figure out who won these Kahoot prizes. Right, we're gonna find out the podium with the bronze, Woodrow Wilson. Five with the silver, Nick Wood, and with the gold, Derek. Hi. Nice job. And, oh, Seth Tan and Ryan Russell popping in the top five. All right, so we we'll slip back over to projection. All right, so there's the last last few things I want to tell you guys. All right, so I wanted to get to some textbook prompts today. Um, we'll have to put on off to tomorrow or sorry next week, so that'll be all right. You guys see these textbook problems? Um, maybe you guys have started reading those and started to solve them, but we're gonna go over some of those. Uh, also, uh, you guys know you have um, your, your first assignment on AP Classroom that's been open a while. And you know what? AP Classroom, AP Classroom also has a bunch of really good resources on it, doesn't it? Like, like videos and stuff. Go check out some of those. 
And if you think that they're really helpful, then you know that, you can make use of those. And if they're not very helpful, then well, you know that too, right? right. And next week we'll do uh, more puzzle problems. I'm gonna do some more graphs with you guys. Uh, I'll start projectile motion. Uh, I wanna give you guys one more page of notes uh, this week. Right? You guys ready for the last page of notes? Yeah. Right. I wanna go back to, where's, ah, this, okay? I wanna talk about this. You guys remember this? The ball moving up, then comes back down. But it's always accelerating down, right? right? Let's make a two by two table. Okay. And I'm going to look at uh, velocity, uh, which of course is meters per second, okay. uh, versus uh, uh, acceleration. Uh, which is in meters per second squared, okay? Uh, and velocity could be positive or it could be negative. And same, same thing for acceleration. Same thing, uh, acceleration could be positive uh, or negative. Because remember that these are both vector quantities, which means direction matters, right? I wonder what happens when you uh, consider the, the signs of each one, how, how they interact with each other, right? Okay? okay. So if velocity is positive, uh, which, if velocity is positive, that means that the motion itself is positive. Velocity does tell you, uh, velocity tells direction of motion. So if something's moving forward, it has a forward velocity. If something's moving in the positive direction, it has to have a positive uh, velocity. Maybe it's speeding up, maybe it's slowing down, and, and that's what this table is about. Right? So if it's moving forward in the positive direction, and it also is accelerating in the positive direction, what's it doing? Speeding up or slowing down? Speeding up. This is getting faster, faster, faster. Picking up speed, right? Kind of like a ball falling off a cliff, right? What if it's moving forward, but um, but has a negative acceleration? What do you think that means? Slow down. Slow down. Hey, you guys know this already. You know this from yesterday. You guys remember we were solving a problem with a car breaking to a stop? That was exactly that quadrant, wasn't it? The car was moving in the positive direction, but we were applying a negative acceleration to the Negative, negative acceleration value. You guys remember that? So it's slowing down. It's breaking to a stop. Right? Uh, I want to hit this bottom quad, bottom right quadrant. Right? What if you have a negative velocity? Um, does that mean the car's in? Re let's see, in that car, is the car in reverse? Yeah. Yes. And you are also accelerating in the same direction. What's the car doing? It is speeding up. It's speeding up uh, in reverse. Right? Reverse specifically applies to the velocity, and it's speeding because the signs match, just like they match with plus plus. Plus plus or minus minus, either way it's going to speed up in that particular direction. Okay? Uh, what do you guys think this last quadrant is? Slow, right? Slow down. Yeah. Okay. Um, Slow in reverse. In reverse. Uh, I like that uh, addition too. Yeah, slowing in reverse. I'm going to write that. Right. So the car's in reverse because of negative velocity, and it's slowing because there's a mismatch in the signs between velocity and acceleration. Okay, you guys got that? All right, you guys know what we're doing next week. Um, okay, but this is as far as I've been getting in my classes, so I'm going to stop the recording right there.